So today I'm going to share some tips for CCSP study preparation, which I hope you'll find useful in developing your own structured discipline approach to CCSP study. So what am I going to cover? Three topics, some study, learning and exam tips, and you can apply this to any exam. A typical learning schedule, which I applied throughout the iscsquared.org online instructor-led course uh, that I took uh, for this. I think it would be equally applicable if you take the self-paced course or if you take the face-to-face -face, uh, course also. And a typical daily routine uh, that I followed during the study time or I tried to follow during the study time. I think it's very important that in order to pass an exam of this level of difficulty and intenseness you should have a disciplined, structured approach to your learning schedule. So what I'm not going to cover. Technical explanations, instructions on CCSP course syllabus. This is really just for study preparation, so you get an idea of the level of effort I think you need to put in to pass this exam. Uh, I'm not going to cover any sample questions, nor am I going to cover any shortcuts and time-saving hacks. Why? Basically, they don't exist for this exam. The only way you will pass this exam is through a disciplined approach to your study and learning schedule. So, study, learning and exam technique tips. Uh, firstly, I highly recommend picking one reputable study guide and sticking with it. Why? Uh, each author or trainer has a slightly different uh, technique for teaching and uh, getting across the content uh, that you need to learn. And I find if you flip-flop between different study guides, uh, you'll spend more time uh, learning the particular style from that author rather than focusing on the content at hand. Um, then when the study guide that you have suggests a case study to work through or an external resource to read, uh, you should do it. I, I have no proof of this, but my gut feeling is about 20% of your exam readiness. And I'm not saying 20% of your exam marks, I'm saying 20% of your exam readiness will come from working through these uh, external resources. When you take a course such as the ISC Squared Instructor Led course, uh, make notes along the way and keep a training uh, log throughout the course. Um, throughout the course your instructor will highlight various areas that uh, they feel are of particular importance for the exam and after all the goal is you're going to pass the exam so that's why you're doing the course so keeping that learning log is, is essential along the way so you can refer back to it. Uh, at a later date. Now there's a lot of debate around uh, using sample questions and practice exams and here's my advice. Use them carefully. Um, avoid spending time memorizing question banks. Uh, often they are wrong and you won't perform in the exam. Now, the only way you will perform the, in the exam is surprise, surprise, uh, if you know the syllabus. Uh, you can't pass the ex exam from memorizing question banks alone. So your time is better spent learning the syllabus thoroughly. Then take the practice exam on the last week of your class, around week seven or even the week before. But the idea here is that you take the practice exam before the official course ends so that you still have one or two weeks to ask the instructor any uh, questions on doubtful points that you find in the knowledge deficiency report. Um, by this stage, uh, if you take the practice exam towards the end of the course, you should be looking at getting uh, a 70% pass rate on the practice exam. And if you get that, I think that's a good indicator that uh, you're on the right path to passing the real exam. Uh, consistency with a disciplined study schedule over time is how you will pass this. You won't pass from cramming last minute and you won't pass by memorizing question banks. Um, if that's what your technique is, this exam is going to be extremely stressful for you. Then when you actually make it to the exam, I recommend that 24 hours before the exam, 
you stop studying and clear your mind with something else. Um, by this point, 24 hours before the exam, there's, there's nothing, nothing really more that you can study that's, that's going, going to help you pass. You. You're, you're either prepared, well prepared to pass the exam by that point, or you're not prepared. And I think if you push aside the emotions that come with the excitement and stress with attending this exam and look deep within yourself, you will already know whether you are uh, well equipped to pass the exam by this stage. During the exam, uh, read the questions carefully and then read again before submitting your answer and, and practice this during the uh, practice exams as well. Um, Quite often you'll get tricked out with the way the questions are worded and given that the CCSP exam I think has moved to the adaptive model now, uh, it's really important that you do this because you can't go back and check your answers later. Then I think timing, uh, this can be a long exam. Again with the adaptive exam I think uh, probably one and a half hours if you're not taking the adaptive exam for some reason. Uh, it, I think it's up to a two and a half or three hour exam. Uh, so allocate about two minutes per question I recommend for this exam. Some questions will take more, some will take less, but you don't want to be at the point where you get towards the end of the exam and you run out of time and you still have uh, 10 questions or the adaptive uh, algorithm uh, still hasn't picked up that you're going to pass with completing enough questions. Lastly, I think uh, a bit of stress is okay for any exam and I, I think it will increase your performance also. That's That's been my personal experience. So try and turn any stress that you have into excitement. The excitement that you're finally going to uh, sit the exam and pass it and move on in life. Okay, learning schedule. Now, I'm assuming again, you're going to take the eight week iscsquared.org online instructor lead or face to face. Uh, I know they have three day courses or one week courses. Uh, I, I don't recommend this. I think you need a period of time to let the information that you're learning digest and sink in and uh, so you can do additional study and research and really solidify what you're learning throughout. So the general idea here is that uh, before the course starts, ISC Square will open up the course material to you and you can read it. Uh, I recommend reading the entire course material um, within the you know, one or two weeks before the course. I'm not saying you have to understand everything, but at least work through it so you get a familiarity with what you're going to cover in the following eight weeks. So then when you start the actual ISC Squared course, um, it's split up into different domains and you know depending on the pace of the instructor and the students um, you may complete domains faster or slower depending on how things go throughout the course so roughly, roughly speaking, speaking what, what I, I recommend, recommend is that when you take a particular domain during that week also pre-read the following weeks topics and I think this is very important because when you get to the following week you will already be familiar with the material even more so familiar because now you should have read it twice uh, you can also identify any uh, questions or doubtful points that you can ask the instructor uh, through that week and quite often this will help the other students in the course as well because they may be thinking of the similar thing that, that uh, you're thinking of. So for the first few weeks of the course, uh, follow this pattern. Uh, attend the class, but while during that same week you're attending the class, pre-read the following week's class material so that when you get to the following week, you're already familiar and you can ask questions on doubtful points. So then when you start getting to around domain five, uh, what I recommend you do is again, go back and start re-reviewing the entire course that you've taken to date. Uh, again, prepare more questions on doubtful points for the instructor and actually book the exam. Uh, why I say book the exam this early is uh, two reasons. One, it gives you a goal, uh, a solid goal that you work towards and it applies a, a bit more pressure to you. These exam uh, fees are quite expensive and you, you don't want to fail it because uh, it costs a lot of money to do it again. Then second, 
uh, because of this uh, worldwide pandemic situation, uh, it's actually quite hard to, to get into the courses. There's, there's actually, I'm oh, sorry, it's quite hard to get into the exams. Uh, there's a backlog and it can actually take quite some time uh, to find a, an, an available spot. So I recommend that you take the actual exam within uh, two weeks of completing the course. So which means you should be looking at booking the exam about uh, four or five weeks before. Uh, that time. So when you get to about week eight of the class, uh, this is usually the time where you've finished all of the domains and it's mainly catch up topics and uh, revision. So this is again is the perfect time to have already completed your practice exam, uh, reviewed the knowledge deficiency report and you can use this time to ask the instructor and other students um, what doubtful points you have and have some open discussion and dialogue about this as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, very useful. Then once you've finished the actual official course, uh, I'd, I'd allow two weeks of um, more study uh, to continue prepping for the actual exam. So. During this time, don't be shy with uh, reaching out to your instructor via email and asking more questions. Uh, I find the INC squared uh, instructors are very professional and very, very eager to make sure that you they can do everything possible to help you pass the exam. So don't be shy, reach out to your instructor, reach out to the other class students and ask questions. Um, this is just part of the continual prep to actually doing the exam and then at the end uh, you book the exam and start to finish my recommended uh, process for this should take between 13 or 14 weeks start to finish so treat this as an intensive 13 or 14 week uh, training course because this is really intense this uh, CCSP exam is one of the more uh, intense exams that you will take in your IT career but I always say hard work leads to great success and great reward, so it's worth it. Okay, okay. Daily, daily routine. Now, of, of course, course everyone has a uh, different personal circumstance, but typically here's how I try my very best to structure my days when I'm working through any exam, especially this uh, CCSP exam. So I split it into three categories here. First category is Monday to Friday where you have no class. So I have a structured approach where you wake up at a certain time, you allow some time for exercise, uh, you allow some time for study in the morning. Um, you of course have to conduct your morning routine. So breakfast, kids to school if you've got kids, uh, go to work. Then you know, we have to work, so there's a, a good amount of time allocated for work. Then you need a lunch break. Uh, you can study during your lunch break if you like. Sometimes I did that. Sometimes I just took the lunch break uh, to clear my mind and do whatever, go for a walk around the park or, or just sit there and read a book that's unrelated, unrelated uh, to CCSP. Then in the afternoon, you have to work again and you have your evening routine. And then you should be looking to fit in another one hour study in the evening and go to sleep at a reasonable hour. And then similar to the weekdays where you actually have a class scheduled, uh, it's the same sort of schedule except that I recommend you pre-plan ahead that you uh, end your work a bit earlier than normal uh, to cater for the evening class. Then. In return, your evening routine will push out a bit more and your sleep will um, more or less be the same. So you're fitting in the same sort of activities within the day, except that uh, you have some additional activities with the course and less activities with the study, uh, the, the days that you have uh, the online class. Then on the weekend, I think it's very important to mix it up between study and personal time. So. I'm recommending that you allocate uh, some time for study in the morning uh, 
uh, two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon but for the rest of the weekend is uh, pretty much uh, yours to do as you please so key points uh, be disciplined throughout this um, there are going to be days that will be give and take where you cannot fit in as much uh, study as you would like but try and make up for that on the, another day uh, your goal should be around two hours of study per day during the week and four hours of study per day on the weekends. Uh, I think it's very, very, very important to exercise on a regular basis, uh, eat well and abstain from alcohol. Uh, these things will, will help you succeed in this exam. I think you should strongly consider abstaining from social media. I, I know this is uh, very difficult for a lot of people, but uh, even consider deleting your social media account uh, completely. Why I say this is, if you look at the schedule that I'm suggesting here, there's, there's actually not a lot of time in the day. We all get 24 hours in a day, but how we use that time is the difference between success and failure. And I guarantee you will need for this entire eight or 13 week duration of study, you will need every single hour of the day that you can get to either devote to your study, work, or personal time. So please uh, consider that one. Uh, throughout the, the study time, uh, give yourself incremental rewards along the way, especially on the weekends. It shouldn't all be doom and gloom and study, study, study. Uh, you have to have some fun and reward yourself along the way, and that will help uh, keep your motivation up. And then lastly, most employers will offer flexible sort of work arrangements or study time uh, when you're doing these sorts of uh, professional exams. Uh, take advantage of this. I think um, most employers will cherish the fact that you're devoting time to pursue these efforts and uh, definitely take advantage of it. You, you need all the help that you can get uh, to do this. So in conclusion, there's no shortcuts, there's no time-saving hacks. Uh, you cannot pass this exam through memorizing question banks alone. In my humble opinion, I strongly believe the only way you can pass this exam is through a structured and disciplined approach to your study and learning over the extended period of time. And this is just my approach and I hope you can take some guidance from it. Maybe it will work for you, maybe it won't but at least it gives you an idea of the level of effort that I think I had to put in and I think some of my fellow classmates had to put in as well uh, to actually get through and pass this exam. So good luck and all the best and have a nice day.